Welcome to the Darkest Fortune Iceberg, Volume 2. If you guys haven't seen the first one, it'll be linked in the description. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Anyways, on with... Level 1 Ace, Hispanic Dragon Ball Super Arc So, this is one of my favorite memes to have ever come out of 4chan. This entry refers to the memes, quote unquote, fan-made Dragon Ball Super characters slash transformations. The characters are known as El Hermano, Gohan Calvo, El Gran Padre, etc, etc. Here on the screen right now you'll see a list of the power scaling rankings of all these characters. Obviously you can see there's some other characters I didn't really mention. Some of the most prolific of these characters are Ultra Instinct Shaggy and his two other forms, Shaggy Verde and Shaggy Rojo. Uh, yes, this is the first time we ever see Ultra Instinct Shaggy, which basically evolved into his own meme. He was even in multiverses. Uh, yikes, yeah, uh, the news for it. <laughs> and I can't forget about Gohan Blanco which actually became true in the new Dragon Ball movie. So the way I remember this meme was that the Hispanic community of Dragon Ball started making fun of the English-speaking theorists and power scalers and just started shitposting about random theories with El Hermano and Gohan Blanco and every other character. Personally, the most funny one to me was El Hermano. Here's a picture of him again. So. If you couldn't tell, El Hermano, which in English translates to the brother, is Jiren's older brother, who in the lore, quote unquote, is basically Itachi to Jiren Sasuke. And he was stronger than all the other angels and gods of destruction and even the Omni King. He searched throughout the timelines and different universes to find someone to fight but eventually came back to the Tournament of Power to settle his score with Jiren and to see if he had gotten any stronger. Eventually, Gohan Blanco and Shaggy were able to defeat and unalive him. A YouTube video claims to have started Gohan Blanco, although I'm not too sure if this is true, but the video claims that he technically started it all the way back in 2014. This Hispanic Dragon Ball fan arc meme was most prevalent around 2017 and 2018 while the Tournament of Power was airing. Burger King Foot Lettuce I'd be surprised if no one had ever heard of these as it was a massive meme back in 2017. The name of this entry really does explain what the entry is. Back in 2012 on 4chan, an Anon posted a picture of their shoe, each in a separate tub of lettuce, with the post containing the message, This is the lettuce you eat at Burger King. Not even 10 minutes later, in the same thread, other Anons had taken a look at the metadata on the picture, and had actually found the city and state that the picture was taken in, Mayfield, Ohio. Using that, Anons were able to find which Burger King this picture was taken from within the hour of the picture being posted. Anons had gone in contact with the manager of the Burger King, sent them a picture of the shoes and lettuce and by the next day, it was being reported on by the local news, with the Burger King saying that they had already dealt with the employees. So now we jump back to the beginning of this entry, as in 2017, a channel doing top 15s in their video about times 4chan had solved things, brought this entry up, and what specifically made this into a meme was the way the narrator, Chills, described the event. As well as his unique cadence, he spoke quickly, and this would be copy pasted and the audio would become a meme itself, now known as Number 15, Burger King Foot Lettuce. The last thing you would want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus, but that might not be what you get. OP Yo's Pepe at a Hillary rally. This one is self-explanatory. Just a 4chan user ends up going to a Hillary rally while she was running for president and yells Pepe. Here's the clip of him doing it and I'll link it in the description as well. All key tenants making up 
the emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. Now, alt-right is short for alternative right. But yeah, I'm pretty sure if my memory is correct, this was around the Pepe memes peak or close to the peak. But yeah, self-explanatory. Slot posting. This refers to a specific type of 4chan post, not specific to one board. It's usually meant to derail or just be stupid, usually accompanied with a picture of a dog drinking water. The schlop is meant to refer to the sound of the dog in the picture drinking the water. Sometimes it's used to start a thread and have other people respond with other stupid forms of schlop. Other times this is used to derail threads. Either way, schlop is a pretty funny post. This meme had gone viral a couple of times, usually paired with a Twitter screenshot of someone saying 4chan is full of races and then followed by an image of schlop. Bike Anon and the Cone so this entry when i first edited it onto the iceberg this was like two months before we started like doing anything for the video i had had the clip and everything and i forgot to bookmark it and now that i'm researching this it was impossible for me to find which i did eventually find it i'll link the whole clip with this anon in the description but basically, it's just a live stream of Times Square. And there's this cone on the street. So a random Anon says he will show up on the stream and mess around with the cone. And eventually, he puts it on his head by the request of some of the users on the thread. And the video I found, and Anon managed to record both the thread and the live stream at the same time. And he uploaded it on YouTube. Also, I'm pretty sure this cam slash livestream captured more random moments. Like some Anons knocking down the stand more than once. Uh, but that could be on the third version of this video. Uh, it will, now that I mentioned it. <laughs> be ready. Gondolas. Gondolas are genuinely one of my favorite memes. The gondola is a simple drawing of a brown figure with two long legs connected by a torso slash head. Usually the character could be found in random drawings by anons or sometimes they're drawn into famous photos slash drawings. But there is one important thing about the gondola and that is that the subject is always observing as that is the point of the gondola. It's a figure that can only observe. I mean that was the initial purpose of the gondola but obviously with time and being spread around the internet the meme morphed to whatever people wanted it to be. First created by Scary Pizza on popular Finnish image board Yiluta, the gondola is actually a mutation slash based off another old meme, Spurdo Sparte, which was another character created by the image board of Yiluta. That was meant to mock newcomers of the image board who would often post images of Pedo Bear, if people still remember what that is, with some dumb nonsense, so basing Spurdo off Pedo Bear, they created a mutation of it. It speaks its own language. I remember popular posts of him saying Fug and Venus. The two characters would become massive and would move from Yiluta and 4chan. There's a bit more history of Spurdo, but this is the gondola entry. To Krautchan, a German image board which is always compared to 4chan. What I do remember being really popular was a video of a gondola taking a shower. It was on YouTube and I know it had a lot of views, but I can't seem to find the video anymore. It probably got taken down for copyright reasons. Pretty sure it was using music that it shouldn't have been using. Anyways, that's the foremost gondola post take, even nowadays. It's usually a video with very limited animation, repeating frames, and some music in the background, while the gondola looks on contently, sometimes sad and other times happy. On the rare occasion, you will have a fist of the Borf Star level MS Paint animation, which they're always great and funny. Anyways, here's a playlist of gondolas if you're interested. Level 2 Pools closed. Habbo Hotel is an online community hub in which users make avatars and put them into lobbies called hotels and, well, they just chat. Think of those VR chat rooms but before VR so you're looking at like a bunch of small pixel people chatting. Well in 2005 or 2006, Know Your Meme and the wiki have different years where this started. On the b-board of 4chan, there was discussion on whether or not Habbo Hotel's mods were banning users off their avatar skin color. 
Then on July 6, and I'm just gonna trust the wiki on this and say 2005, a group of Anons calling themselves the Blockers would raid Haba Hotel and block off areas of the hotel by creating a blockade with their avatars. And since Habo avatars couldn't walk through each other, this led to frustration with other players. More raids would continue, and soon they would become far more organized and far bigger as many others joined the raid. The most important thing to come out of this was the phrase, pools closed due to AIDS, which was uttered by the blockers as they stopped other players from entering Habo's pool. There was a dress code to these raids as they became far more organized, as blockers would change their avatars to skins of black men in suits with afros. From this writing, blockers would actually become a trolling group called Patriotic. I don't think I'm allowed to say it because the group specifically said the second word is a stand-in for the n-word without using the n-word. But I'll spell it out and see if Eris edits it or not. It's N-I-G-R-A. The raid actually led to a real-life raid at Sul Lake's headquarters, the owners of Habbo Hotel. And they made a swatsika outside of the company building, which was something some Anons did in Habbo with their avatars. Also in 2008, someone would print an image of the pool's closed beam and tape it to a fence of a pool and a woman would find it racist and go on the news and then she would soon be harassed by Anons. The Shopping Cart Theory So every now and then on Twitter, I personally see it circulate around, but it originated as a 4chan post and it goes as, The shopping cart is the ultimate litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task and one which we all recognize as the correct, appropriate thing to do. To return the shopping cart is objectively right. There are no situations other than dire emergencies in which a person is not able to return their cart. Simultaneously, it is not illegal to abandon your shopping cart. Therefore, the shopping cart presents itself as the apex example of whether a person will do what is right without being forced to do it. No one will punish you for not returning the shopping cart. No one will fine you or kill you for not returning the shopping cart. You gain nothing by returning the shopping cart. You must return the shopping cart out of the goodness of your own heart. You must return the shopping cart because it is the right thing to do, because it is correct. A person who was unable to do this is no better than an animal an absolute savage who can only be made to do what is right by threatening them with a law and the force that stands behind it. The shopping cart is what determines whether a person is good or bad member of society. So like in the post it says that no one will stop you, which was technically correct at the time, but every now and then on TikTok, I get videos from, I can't remember his name, but I'll put it in the description. But it's a guy that's basically just in a parking lot and fucking with people that don't put their shopping cart back in the spot. Like throwing magnets on his car or putting the cart right behind their car so they won't be able to get out and be forced to move it out of the way. And, but yeah, this theory and the fact that one of my past jobs included pushing carts to their spot has made me always put shopping carts into the little areas they're supposed to go. So yeah, I hope you guys do the same thing and put your carts where they're supposed to go. Just be a good person and do it. Most of the time it's teenagers doing these jobs and please don't be a dickhead because I, I know how it feels to push the carts. Uh, just do it. it. It's not that hard. War Machine versus 4chan. I would summarize this post, but there already is a great green text that does, so here goes. Former UFC fighter named War Machine, that's his real name, he had it changed legally. He's very unstable and has a criminal history. Has been arrested for beating up four male porn stars at one time. He always types shit like, what you, and stupid teenage crush shit to his porn star GF Christy Mack. Someone on 4chan made a thread around 12pm yesterday getting everyone the Twitter bomb and call him a F word, and his GF a W word. He raged. B found out yesterday it was also the anniversary of his father's death. B found out that he tried to perform CPR on his father and failed. B found out his mom was also a drug addict. B started telling this shit to him and telling him that he killed his own father. He raged and hit himself and posted a pic of his bruised face saying that it was self-inflicted. B got his address via a picture he posted. B proceeded to post his pics on Craigslist in the gay section and told any gay male to come over. They put his address in the ad. 
B told him to delete System32, so he started asking how on Twitter. Some white knights let him in on it and told him it was 4chan and not to delete his System32. He starts talking shit about 4chan, calling them pussies and shit. Someone linked him a thread and he figured out how to post, and posted the following. Wow, you bunch of goddamn little f-words. I'd fucking destroy every one of you. It took me like 5 minutes to figure out how to post on this f-word site. Thank you chat for giving me the website. Wow, chat, okay. How about every one of you meet me in person and watch what happens when you say something. My girlfriend is a great person, don't you dare talk about my dad like you know him. Nothing could have changed what happened, you little pussies. The raid lasted over 7 threads and nearly 12 hours. There's still people bashing him on Twitter as we speak. TLDR? He mad. I mean obviously bullying isn't really condoned and all that, but just a little early 4chan troll incident. Katawa Shoujo So this is a video game developed by 4Leaf Studios. After a doujin released in 2007 by Ryata Honjo came to light, 4Leaf Studios began working on the visual novel based on a bonus page at the end of the one shot. 4Leaf Studios was made by people who frequent the A board or the anime and manga board of 4chan. Uh, if you couldn't tell, 4Leaf and 4chan also has 4 leaves. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the game is about Hisao Nakai. Sorry if I mispronounce it, uh, even though the person isn't real. A normal teenage boy who had his life turned upside down when a long, dormant, cardiac fuck dude <laughs> cardiac dysarthemia forces him to move to a fictional school for disabled children Yamaku High so embarrassingly enough I played this game before I even knew it had ties to 4chan cause a youtuber I liked played it and I thought oh, that's pretty cool and so I played it uh, it's okay to enjoy visual novels uh I'm not going to make fun of you. I don't know about my partner though. <laughs> Fridge bro. So this next entry is just straight up disgusting. Like, it's just really nasty. And I'm warning you, here and now, about the horrors of Fridge bro. So if you have a weak stomach to old moldy food, you have been warned. On September 15, 2015, an Anon, who I will refer to as Fridge bro, posted green text. In it, he gives a quick synopsis of his living conditions. Here are the highlights. While browsing 4chan at night in his bed, he lets drain flies just hoover around him since they're attracted to the light. His table is covered in expired food and dirty dishes. One time he left milk out for so long that the expired milk eventually built up so much gas in the container that it exploded and covered everything. One day, he puked all over his toilet and fell asleep on top. He never decided to clean it up, and just hovered over his toilet whenever he needed to use it. One of his fridges doesn't close properly, so the bugs get in and just live in it. The food in the fridge obviously goes bad, so he just shoves it in the corner of the house and uses his mini fridge and a fridge his neighbor was going to throw away, instead just leaving the old fridge in the corner. Fridge Bro explains that he has had very minimal contact with others, just when he walks his dog. And with this, he posts a whole slew of images, proving the veracity of Fridge Bro's claims. Anons took an interest and asked much more about him. Fridge Bro explains that he's lived his whole life like this and is pretty much used to it. Also, when he wants to take a shower, he boils water and uses that because as you can see in the video, his tub and sink are just a pig stein. You thought the bad stuff was over? Well, guess what? It's actually just starting. So here's your second warning. Anons noted that Fridge Bro had sour cream in his fridge. Well, they asked him to open it and tempted him to eat it. He doesn't just answer their provocations. The mad Fridge Bro put the sour cream in the microwave and seemingly drinks the disgusting expired dairy concoction. But guess what? It's not over there. And it should go without saying, it does get worse. He would update at a later time again on 4chan, and the house was now in an even worse state. It sort of looked like back when AI neural images were first released to the public. That is actually the best way to describe the house at this point. A quick Google seeing what actually happened to Fridge Bro leads to a Reddit post where a user T with dogs on the Neckbeard Nest subreddit actually summarizes what happened to Fridge Bro. More on Fridge Bro if you're interested. Fridge Bro was 41 to 42 years old at the time of his original post of 4chan. He was an unemployed welder living in a rental house in Springdale, Arkansas. 
which he inhabited for about four years. After being unseen for weeks, the home owners went to the house to check up on him. They noticed that the electricity was off, the door was jammed, the water was running from underneath the garage door, in addition to the very bad smell. Police were dispatched for a welfare check, which led to this incomplete report. Apparently, Fringebro had abandoned the house a week earlier to visit his mother, who was sick. Immediately following the sour cream incident, he reportedly left a pile of rotting trash on his neighbor's doorstep and lit some fires on his back porch. This led to adult protective services going to his house and trying to interview him. After some failed attempts at cleanup, Fringebro fled to Minnesota. He was arrested at his hotel in Rochester, Minnesota, shortly after February 2016 for an outstanding warrant related to the damages caused to the rental home. He was also charged as a fugitive of justice, though he claimed to not be aware of the warrant. He was held in Minnesota County Prison for a few weeks before being extradited back to Arkansas. With regard to his personal life, Fridgebro claimed to have bought all his food at the local dollar store. His house had no hot water, which is why he bathed using boiling water in his bathtub. He admitted to not washing his clothes. He claimed to have had a single online friend. To him, his living situation was kept secret until June 2016. He was reportedly a virgin. As of June 2016, Fridgebro was on bail and awaiting trial in a motel. He claimed to be trying to keep it clean and to still be in possession of his dog. The landlord's quote for repairs and cleanup of the Arkansas rental home was $29,165. More photos. At the end of the post, there are three links, one of which I already mentioned, which were the other pics of the state of the house. His house got even worse after the original post of 4chan. After the original post, there are two other Imgur posts, one labeled Fridge Bros Ravioli, Come and Worm Sandwich, and another called Microwave with Gross Puddle and Bread Ties. And that's the tell of Fridge Bro. Brittany Venti. She was a Twitch streamer that 4chan just loved to raid. She easily gained the attention of 4chan by acting in a very generic white girl image and just did too much with her outbursts. At around April slash May of 2015, Britney's popularity just exploded as one of her streams was rated by 4chan and recorded. The video was then posted on YouTube. Britney fed off of the attention she got causing more of her breakdowns and tantrums from her streams to get posted in videos. And it was just a circle that kept going. I will say, when I first learned about Brittany Venti, it was through one of the compilations of her breaking down. So uh, you could say I was kind of part of it. (laughs) After more of her freakouts were recorded, another video got posted and That ended up getting more views than the original one, making it, you know, more people showing up, doing the same thing over and over again. On June 12th of 2015, Britney got her Twitch channel permabanned for racist, pornographic, and suggestive content. Uh, She transferred over to Hitbox until around 2017. She was also part of YouTube Gaming around May 9th, 2017 through July 27th, 2017. Brittany's Twitch account was reinstated on July 27th, 2017 and was permabent again after doing a stream about the YouTube headquarters shooter on April 3rd, 2018. And so yeah, I don't really have much to say about Brittany. I did enjoy the videos that I first saw, but while looking at the videos now, uh, they're just cringe. 4chan makes Oprah say 9,000 penises. The famous talk show host Oprah would air an episode about internet predators. For whatever reason, presumably just for the lols, there would soon be posts from strange accounts on the official Oprah message boards. With names like Anthony9001, Lord Xenu, remember 4chan was one of the first websites to protest Scientology, and post referring to the hacker collective anonymous's tagline of we do not forgive, we do not forget, it's safe to assume these three posters came from 4chan. One post left on Oprah's message board would actually be read out loud in a later episode by Oprah herself. And in repeating the post verbatim, Oprah says a line we have over 9,000 penises and they are all art-wording children. 
Now, obviously, this was a meme off the Dragon Ball Z over 9000, and you know, mainstream media didn't really get it, but led to a really funny conclusion, I guess. More motivation. You still don't understand what our children are up against. Let me read you something that was posted on our message boards from someone who claims to be a member of a known pedophile network. It said this, he doesn't forgive, he does not forget, his group has over 9,000 penises and they're all raping children. So I want you to know they're organized and they have systematic ways of hurting children and they use the internet to do it. These are the predators that are molesting and raping our children, then trading the photos and videos online. And I wanna stress again, this is not about politics, it's about giving the dedicated men and women of law enforcement who are trying to catch these predators the resources they need. Reddit versus 4chan, Battlefield 3. So this isn't the first time Reddit versus 4chan happened on a video game. But this one is kind of prolific. Basically, most of the people who showed up for the event just wanted to have a good, fun match. The event was organized by someone who was known as Confusion. Who, from what I understand, was on Reddit's side. He started claiming that people on 4chan's side were cheating and just started kicking people out. Everyone just assumes that this was his plan from the start, if it looked like Reddit started losing. Although, uh, I'm gonna say this here right now, I'm not sure if 4chan actually cheated or not, but I do know is that he just started kicking people randomly. Apparently, the only rule for this event was no talking on all chat, but aside from that, there were no rules. So he, he, apparently there was no rules besides the no talking and all chat. And it's really up to you if 4chan did cheat and hack, could it really be considered wrong? But in my opinion, I think it is wrong because I mean, why'd you have to ruin it for the rest of the people that showed up? So after the game, people on 4chan started game raids on reddit and started calling everyone who used it a cheater and sore losers so from the looks of it it just seems that 4chan never actually cheated and the person that organized the event confusion just wanted reddit to win for some brownie points and like i mentioned earlier this wasn't the first time a 4chan versus reddit thing happened uh, but that'll be on our third version of this iceberg. Level 3 4chan makes a kid delete system 32. So this one's a classic, at least I believe so. We all know the meme, the delete system 32 to fix the issue. And that's pretty much this whole entry. It starts with a random user making a post on how to try force how to try force is a 4chan meme which could actually now that i think about it could actually be on the iceberg oh, gotta write this down but uh, enough about that so instead of actually teaching him how to try force it says to delete system 32 so another user comes onto the thread kind of mad asking how to fix it and saying that his dad is going to come back very soon and he needs to know how to fix it and they just continue trolling him he then continues to ask for help and someone else says to put the drive with windows on it and spam f8 and according to the guy that deleted system 32 he didn't have the right windows to fix the problem and says if it'll still work. The other user says they're not sure, but he tries anyway. He then proceeds to uninstall their version of Windows and install Windows XP, basically deleting everything on the PC. Okay, so that part wasn't really on 4chan. That's kind of on him for still trying it, even though they said they weren't sure. So that same user then asks, where is the undeleted file? So the other users 
tell him there isn't one and he's fucked. So the user that deleted System32 basically says, Haha, I know you're trolling me. Please just tell me where the undelete files are. So basically, 4chan right there was telling him the truth, but he just thought they were trolling him again. So 4chan did what 4chan does and says, you have to magnetize the hard drive. And so he does, completely wiping the drive. The user was never heard from again and is probably recovering from the beating his dad gave him. The Fappening Back in 2014, one of the most controversial leaks regarding celebrities would happen, and that would be the nude slash revealing pictures of over 500 iPhone users that would be leaked on 4chan slash B. And later, these images would be compiled in the subreddit r slash the fappening and be saved onto Imgur. At first, it was believed that hackers got these images through hacking Apple's iCloud storage, but Apple would later deny that. Later, more reports would actually confirm that the hacks were done via successful phishing attempts, but some accounts were actually broken into. The origin of these online images seemed to be the image board called Anon IB, and it was reported by Gawker that TMZ was trying to get their hands on the other stuff the hacker had, but in the end, the hacker just went to 4chan to dump them, in spite of TMZ. This is Gawker reporting, so take it with a grain of salt. Some weird things happened from this. For one, in order to gain some public appeal, r slash the fappening tried raising money for a prostate cancer foundation, but the foundation denied the money that was funded. 4chan would expose a redditor going by the name Blunt Mastermind, also known as Brian Hamade, who tried selling images, but when caught, denied having to do anything with the leaks and later said the images were all actually doctored. He wanted $100 in Bitcoin. Lastly, and probably the most known one, was the CNN report on the fappening, and the news reporter Brooke Baldwin interviewing Brett Larson, in which some hilarious things were said in total ignorance about 4chan. For instance, calling 4chan a hacker, saying, who is this 4chan? Brett Larson saying 4chan could have been a system administrator. Microwave Grenade Similar to the toilet grenade entry from our first volume of The Iceberg, it's kind of weird that two separate grenade incidents happen on 4chan. So the thread opens up with OP saying how he found a grenade in the forest and posts pictures of the grenade to show 4chan users that it isn't drilled in the bottom and he provides timestamps with it. He follows a suggestion from another user and pulls the pin, but the whole top broke off. And another user says to go to the forest, light a fire, and run. But instead of that, he just throws it in the microwave. Nothing happens, luckily. He then throws it in a fire. Again, nothing happens. Then he runs it over with a car. After that, we never hear from the user again. Hopefully nothing happened to him. Sammy Catnipnik. Now, funny thing I found out about this image slash topic is that despite it sometimes being labeled as the day 4chan got scared, the original thread, at least as far as I could find, seems to actually be from 8chan on a lol cow board. At least that's what Anons on a thread on X discuss. Now seeing as 8chan has been wiped off the clear net and has been rebranded as 8kun, there's no way to know, but there is a screenshot to back up what I'm saying. The topic's main focus is a furry that goes by the online alias of Sammy Catnipnik, aka Dusky Sammy, and in this post, all the anons are responding in absolute terror, as they seem to already have an idea of what OP wants to discuss, and they want absolutely nothing to do with Sammy Catnipnik's content. Now, as far as I can tell online, there's absolutely no strange content about this dude. I mean, he has this weird goofy OCs, which I found their names on his fur affinity account, the one on the right in the image of all three of his OCs is called Gary LeGuff. The one in the middle is Buck, I don't know, if he's a LeGuff. And the one in the left is called Larry LeGuff. And they're part of a project called Two Noise. The one in Boxer Shorts is a different Goofy called Maddie. As far as on the surface web, there's actually nothing weird on the internet about the characters. I mean, the costume maker, Sammy, on all socials seems to just have like only suggestive stuff, nothing hardcore or kinky, enough to actually like scare people. I mean the video, Two Goofball Assholes, is on YouTube. The video there is a full re-upload, and then there is a 2 minute version on Sammy's main account. And there is an 11 minute re-upload, which is what the thread I assume mentions. And there's nothing dirty in it, just some really shitty cringe humor. 
This person, Sammy, also has another YouTube account where he posts short films, of which you could find images of his Fur Affinity account. The main thing everyone seems to be reacting to is this Xtube link that his Fur Affinity name is attached to, but the link is dead as Xtube is defunct. And I checked the other links around as well, and the only thing I saw was broken video streams and three dudes in a gimp suit, a uh, pleasing one tied to a bed frame. But none of that was on Xtube as Xtube is defunct, and the gimp suit video there really is no way to know if like Sammy's actually tied to it anyway. God, I had to watch these things. Now in the screenshot, there's a picture of a girl and a guy goofy OC, but I have no idea where that's from. But it's definitely the stuff Sammy made, as the noses are what matches on his fur affinity. There for sure seems to be some sus things, but I'm guessing this stuff has been purged or hidden pretty well for the most part. This guy Sammy just seems to be your run of the mill furry with a talent and costume design. Now honestly, this guy really has like very little ties with 8chan, not even 4chan really. But there was one comment I found on reddit by user nothing emo, describing one of the said videos Sammy seems to have made. This guy in the goofy cosplay is demented, or maybe I can't appreciate the type of videos he's making. He has a channel on X videos. His videos are strange, fuck, gonzo, lo-fi production quality movies mixed in with solo sexual overtone. For example, the camera is set on a tripod. He and slash or an affiliate, presumably working alongside in the video projects, will be sitting in a bathtub. Cameraman will take two full minutes to zoom in on the face of the actor wearing a latex bodysuit and nondescript mask. There will be a feeling of agony or pain while the man uses a mannequin head filled with some kind of cream to give him a fellatio on his exposed shaft. It progresses from there. Then he will peel his face off. It is fucked. Since I'm already this far in the Sammy rabbit hole, I can't fail to mention Jonathan Galindo. Jonathan Galindo is a meme that uses the image of Sammy in his Goofy cosplay, dubbed Cursed Goofy. People would use the Cursed Goofy image as a PFP and message people to try the Blue Well Challenge, which was a challenge where for 50 days, a person would be told to harm themselves and by the end of it be told to, you know, gay men themselves, all under the threat of doxing for not complying. When and where the image of Cursed Goofy and the name Jonathan Galindo got tied into harassing people via the Blue Whale Challenge is not known, but one of the first popular accounts that appeared was from TikTok around 2019. Sammy tweeted saying he had nothing to do with this whole challenge slash harassment campaign and disproved of it. OP delivers, before Chen tells his sister. So this entry is kinda on the gross side, kinda on the weird side kind of on the creepy side, but it's also pretty funny. So basically, the OP goes into his sister's room, takes a picture, and makes a thread on 4chan, asking, My sister is at work, and I'm at home. What should I do in her room? 4chan then tell him to come on her pillow, come on her bed, put her panties on and deliver with a timestamp, which I'm not sure if he came on anything, but he did put her panties on and put a timestamp on it. And well, OP delivered, right? So that's one half. <laughs> he then sends more pictures of her stuff and then sends a picture of her for some reason. So. Another 4chan user links her Twitter account on 4chan and also says he's sending her the thread just in case she actually is his sister. Everyone's just laughing at the OP at this point. And they find pictures of her room on Twitter and match it with the photo that OP posted at first and pretty much confirm that it's a 100% match. They also end up finding her Snapchat. And then they find a family photo with both OP and his sister on it. And at this point, the OP just starts pleading and saying, I delivered. Can you all not do anything? I'm honestly asking, please don't fuck up my life. And if you do send her anything, please don't show her the underwear pic. So... As you could probably tell, they did not listen to him. They send her the picture over and over again, and 
pretty much fuck up his life. Although, I can't really blame 4chan on this instance. It's more of OP's fault for being a weirdo. Mortis. Mortis.com is a whole rabbit hole of stuff, so I'll do my best to just try and talk about how 4chan was involved with the whole rabbit hole. Mortis, when it was first found, as far as I can tell, was a combination of G and X, the Technology and Paranormal Board of 4chan. Trying to figure out what was up with the website, because some fairly strange stuff seemed to be hidden on it, and I mean hidden. Like, every file that people try to access through backdoor methods still required a password, and authorization so some people tried hacking into the website, but regardless of how much they tried to brute force their way in, it didn't seem to work. Some things that were discovered though, were the file sizes on the website seemed to be very big, with the biggest being 39 gigs. The website is tied to a dentist who doesn't exist, and is also connected to an old bed and breakfast, a high level security company, a company that sells lamps, makes like 500 million to a million with only 1 to 4 employees as well. Lastly, whatever info there was on the site seems to have been purged, including a wiki about that site. More exploring by the technology board, G as well as some by B, the random board, which was mainly done through the e-begging of Xers, revealed more info in an archive thread. They found the name of the guy who owned the site. His name was Thomas Ling. This could have just been a pseudonym. It was never confirmed. They also found an address under his name, but it was just an empty lot. They also found out the site was created in 1997, for some reason seeming to host terabytes of data on an inaccessible website registered to a person that doesn't exist. Literally terabytes. Literally inaccessible. Literally. Further snooping actually led to them finding at least 8 different websites that seem to be linked to Mortis. They are KarenLing.com, Linsboro.com, EternalNight.com, Cthulhu.net, JoshuaLing.org, DentalFillins.ne, and Taskin.com, and Elon.com. A quick google search of one of these files, Mortis uploaded in 2011 found it uploaded by users similar to how Mortis uploaded it. Something discussed in the thread was that the website was being hosted in Brazil. The hypothesis for this was because Brazil is far more lax with censorship and monitoring. Further in the thread, someone cross-posted an experience someone had from G about the website. Uh, well, a while ago, can't remember when, we found this website called Mortis.com. Simple design, black background with Mortis in all white. Asked you for a username slash password, just like this one. We found two other websites owned by the same guy. One of them was eternalnight.com. After a shitload of trying, someone cracked it and found so much shit, 4 terabytes of information. Apparently the site was cracked and a simply ridiculous amount of data was found. Then the site's owner got in touch with us, started sharing some weird shit that was obviously not true. I believe he said all the shit on the site was just pictures of his family, even though it was like 4 terabytes or something. Then people just stopped. I don't know why. Some say the owner shut it down, others say the feds got involved. All I know is Mortis and Internal Knight still haunt my nightmares. When it comes to 4chan and Mortis, not too much was properly archived and can be viewed. But Mortis does just kind of end the way that person on G describes where people got in contact with Thomas Ling. They said the website was just for family photos and soon the websites would be shut down. And honestly, that's kind of where the truth about it all ends. Lots of people believe that he's lying for a good reason, or it's just photos, and there's no way the website would hold files of that size. But soon the website was shut down and communication went dark. Level 4 4chan post before Jeffrey Epstein's death. Demonetization time, it's not like we do it for the money, anyways. At 8 am on August 10, 2019, there was a post on 4chan. The title of the thread and post by OP made clear one thing that Jeffrey Epstein, the sex trafficker, who was jailed on July 6 of the same year, had been finally arrested for his crimes and was found dead of cardiac arrest. The OP also made sure to point out that Epstein was hung in his jail cell. 38 minutes later, at 8.54, the first reports of the death of Epstein would be made public, the first being on Twitter by the account of ABC News, which didn't even state the cause of death, just that at the time it wasn't known. There would be three more posts by OP, which are very interesting was called out as a cardiac arrest at the Manhattan Federal Detention Facility, where they stole for 40 minutes. Not saying anything after this, please do not try to dox me. The last night after 0415 count, they took him, medical in a wheelchair, front cuff, but not one triage nurse says they spoke to him. 
Next thing we know, a trip ban shows up. We do not do releases on weekends unless the judges order it. Next thing we know, he's put in a single man cell and hangs himself. Here's the thing, the trip ban did not sign in and we did not record the plate number and a guy in a green dress military outfit was in the back of the van according to the tower guy, who let him through the gate. You guys, I'm shaking right now, but I don't think they switched him out. Worked as his stole arrest for 40 minutes. ALS intubated in the field. EPI, 2 liters, NS infused. Telemetry advised bicarb and D50 in the field. PT transported the lower Manhattan ER and worked for 20 minutes and called. Hospital administrator was alerted, preparing statements. Fast forwarding the now and knowing what OP had pointed out was in fact the way Epstein's body was found as well as his cause of death makes these posts far more believable. One thing to note was that the New York Fire Department investigated if it was one of their own that posted this info and all they said was, determine this alleged information did not come from the fire department. OP works for Yeffy. So it's a story about how OP worked for Yeff and how he drove him and powerful people around. He also talked about how he would go on cutie hunting. I don't think I need to explain that. He also talks about how once he had to drive a body and get rid of it. The post for this entry is very, very long. Much too long for this video. But if you want to hear it, I'm pretty sure time six on his Maverick Files YouTube channel, has it in one of his videos. I'll link it in the description. But yeah, we didn't really put this one lower on the iceberg because if it's true, it definitely deserves to be lower. But I can't really confirm if it's true or not, so I think here is a good spot for it. B sends a toad to space. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Someone on B captured a frog, put it in a jar. I think they put it in the fridge to make him sleep, because, you know, lizard biology, if it's cold, they go to sleep. But, I mean, it's an amphibian. I don't know. They gave it vodka to sedate it, and then attached seven green balloons to it, and then sent it to space. All while reporting the results to B, like any sane user of 4chan would. OP gives LSD to his friend. So, a random OP asks on 4chan, what he should do with his 17 tabs of LSD. They respond with putting it in someone's food slash drink. Then OP replies back and says how he put it in a Red Bull and gave it to his friend. Yeah, the OP is a terrible friend. Uh, I don't see how you could call someone a friend after something like that. He posts a picture of his friend holding a Red Bull. And after a couple of more posts, after a couple of more posts, he comes back to the thread and comments, OP here. The dude has fucking vanished. I shit you not. The OP starts freaking out because, I mean, his friend just took 17 tabs of LSD plus a Red Bull, come on, and says he's gonna form some kind of search party and that he doesn't know where he's at and he's scared that he might be melting his face off somewhere. So about four hours later, the OP comes back saying how he found his friend and he is safe, that he was just chilling by some garbage cans. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this entry. This one's pretty bad. I really hope no one is like the OP here, lacing anyone's food slash drinks, let alone your friends. Rako's Trap Harem. So this was mentioned in the last Icebreak video, but we didn't make it into a main subject, rather it was tied to another subject that was extremely tragic. But today we will discuss Rako's Trap Harem. Now the whole subject begins on R9K or Robot 9000. To say it bluntly, it's the place where lonely anons go to post. For the most part, this is usually where you'll see stuff like threads about neats, how they're KHVs, kissless, hugless virgins, and lastly, you'll see threads about why Anons haven't taken the femboy pill, or the pink pill. This is where the story of Reiko's trap harem starts. In these threads, many at the time believe an Anon who went by Reiko-333 on Discord was making these threads 
and in said threads there were links to his discord server in which the rumor goes that he was convincing these robots to become femboys for him and also would convince them to take the HRT medication. Now this is disgusting because he's taken advantage of basically a bunch of lonely incels and telling them he'll give them emotional support only if they become femboys for him. And this whole situation is such like a discord thing. If said manipulation had been done, it's also said that Reiko would blackmail people that joined his harem by threatening to release the photos to their families and online if people in his harem didn't do what he said. On April 4, 2018, there would be a post on R9K trying to expose this Reiko and his agenda. And in response, it seems that the janitors on R9K would try to curb the creation of more trap threats. This would lead many people from 4chan trying to dox Reiko and expose his server and stuff. Well, fast forward a bit and we finally hear from the man after a lot of drama flying around and some YouTube exposed videos by former user 1388. An interview would be released. In it, Reiko admits some things. For one, he did have a tie to people creating the trap threads, but it was mainly through his friend Mongo. There were images of people in trap attire with Reiko's name, but Reiko claims that they weren't forced to do that, and he wasn't blackmailing them with photos. Reiko also claims that there were multiple Discord servers, but the harem one everyone was worrying about wasn't at all what people thought. Just a dead server where some trap and female friends of Reiko would play games. But then more screenshots leaked of the server, and in these Reiko would seem to be posting about him lying about everything, and that he was in fact blackmailing the people in the server. But the main issue is that there wasn't really a way to confirm the validity of these screenshots. Regardless, Reiko's whole scheme had not been falling apart. In an interview after, Turkey Tom did a great deep dive on the subject of Reiko, and in it, Reiko admits to doing all this stuff simply because the whole board culture was slowly becoming more and more incel based, and he hated what it was becoming, so he wanted to ruin the board. I would really recommend both videos since in it there's a great death and summarization of the events as well as the interview afterwards with Reiko and one of his compatriots since it gives their side of the events and how it all went down but if you want the TLDR of the interview, all of it was fabricated by Reiko, even the screenshots. It was essentially in true 4chan fashion for the lols. He just wanted to mess with R9K users. Since they already treated themselves as targeted individuals, it would be easy to trigger their paranoia and that all the trap harm stuff was really just a troll. 4chan coordinates an airstrike. So 4chan users see a post on Twitter from a Twitter user named Ivan Sidorenko. The Twitter user is asking if anyone knows where this location is and posts a photo. So 4chan users proceed to get to work. In the photo there are two pillars that are shown and 4chan proceeds to look for them on Google Maps. They then eventually find the place and reply to the Twitter user with the coordinates of it. He tweets again with the exact location saying that it's going to get striked. Then after the place got striked, he tweets again thanking 4chan. I'm not sure what to think about this entry. It's just very concerning how organized 4chan was able to become for something like this. OP takes a skull from the catacombs. Something people from 4chan, specifically from B do, is throw caution to the wind. And in this case, it definitely happens here, with OP starting the thread on B. If I took a skull from the catacombs, do you think I could get it back to the states no problem? I'm thinking if it's in my luggage, they won't think twice. The first reply is someone mocking him, saying how he would even get it out, with OP replying that it was already sitting in front of him. Some people suggest letting it stay in his luggage and making up some story about it's actually a souvenir or a former family member, but others recommend that he actually just mail it to himself. There were also those calling OP stupid for not respecting the dead's remains. OP would soon post proof of an old and dirty skull, while many anons suggest that he put his member into the eye socket of the skull. OP is rather reluctant upon that request though. Although the initial question by OP never seemed to have gotten truly answered other than mailing it, the general consensus was that it was probably a bad idea and that customs would stop OP if he tried to get on a flight with a skull and his belongings. OP would post this later on in the thread. OP here. I can't believe I'm about to do this. I'll be back in like 15 minutes or so so don't let the thread die. I'll post here when I get back. Depends on how long it'll take me to get a boner, then take a good pick, but Anon must deliver. 
Well, OP comes back, and not just with one picture, but several pictures and different holes of his body part inside of the skull. And yeah, that's OP takes the skull from the catacombs. Level 5 OP cleans his fursuit. So, a furry hops on 4chan and asks them how to clean his fursuit because he spilled grape juice on it. And another user responded to use chlorine and ammonia and it should get it right out. And that's pretty much it for the thread. So if you know anything about chemicals, you know that chlorine and ammonia make chlorine gas. And well, yeah, you could kind of see how it goes. So later on, an article is posted saying how 19 people are hospitalized at Chicago convention after the release of chlorine gas. So the thread was posted on the same day that this article was posted. The article was posted from the looks of it five hours after. So yeah. Okay, so now that you guys know that, I'm 99% sure the post itself was fake. It was probably someone that got the news early and decided to make a joke on it. Although the event is real, someone did bring chlorine gas, but they had them in a bottle and smashed them in a stairwell. Still, the event itself is scary. Operation Shellshock. This story is a bit different from the rest as it's not 4chan doing something awful, but rather it's 4chan users, specifically the b-board, doing something about animal abusers. Now if you know the history of 4chan, you know that the image board seems to have a soft spot for animals, and in this case the anons of B felt bad for a turtle. You see, in July 2014, a video would be uploaded by two girls, one 16 and the other 18, and in it they were torturing a turtle. But not just any turtle, an endangered gopher turtle. 4chan users as well as Tumblr users would come together and try to bring justice to the turtle that was tortured. Now dubbed Gurgra. In the video, two girls would try and set the turtle on fire as well as slamming it into the pavement and eventually putting an end to its life by stomping it. Users would quickly find the names of those who did it since the video was uploaded on Facebook and cross-referencing Google Maps, 4chan users would find out that this happened in Florida and where specifically it all happened. The abuse was reported to the cops, school, parents, ASPCA, PETA, and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation. 4chan would also dox these teenagers and charges would be discussed by the state attorney. And that's what's publicly known about the case. Jenna Jameson. Alright, so I must start off with I don't know who this is. Apparently, she's famous. Uh, I don't know. Jenna Jameson hops on 4chan and asks them to help them find her ex assistant who turned out to be a con artist and scammed her. And essentially, 4chan, like they always do, says tits or GTFO. So she didn't just hop on 4chan, she hopped on the random board, B, and she ends up sending the tits. I won't be posting, or I won't be showing any of the pictures in the video, obviously, but they're out there if you would want to see them. So she posted the tits and timestamp, just to prove it's actually her. So fast forward. 4chan ends up finding more than what she asked for, and well, she thanks them with another picture and they go about their day. Again, this one isn't scary as in like the general sense. It's more scary on how well they found the information. They gave Jenna his last known address, the last four digits of his social security number, his driver license number, and the expiration date for the check card attached to his checking account. After she hopped on the board and said that she got them, she said she won't be posting them because obviously. And after she posts another picture and just thanks B. So yeah, both parties, I guess, consented in a sense or Jenna consented with everything. So. I don't know. 
Kind of a weird entry. Trey Burbo. The story of the moron known as Trey Burbo begins with a post on B at 12.54 a.m. on September 11th. An anon would start a thread, and it was in this thread where OP post, Watch the news tomorrow, with the OP writing, Hello B. On September 11, 2011, at 9.11 a.m. Central Time, two pipe bombs would be remote detonated at Philberg High High School. I, along with two other anonymous, would charge the building armed with, with a Bushmaster AR-15 IMI Galeo AR, a vintage government-issue MI.30 carbine, and a Bellini M4 semi-auto shotgun. So what are your plans, B? Now, OP, who I would say right now is Trey Burba, some 15-year-old who thinks these type of edgy posts are the funniest thing ever, runs into the same problem the Burger King fellas ran into when posting the pic. He didn't delete the XF metadata on the photo. Anons on B would find very quickly about 15 minutes later that the picture was taken by a Canon camera, as well as the owner of the camera was a man called Terry Burbo. Using this info, Anons would soon find the dad's online post and accounts as well as pictures of Trey Burbo posing with some guns. Soon after, Trey would post this into the thread. This is why we can't have nice things, so my little experiment was a success after all. Six months ago, B would have been nothing but supportive and helped to keep a low profile over the feds and possibly provide addresses to nearby surplus stores. Now with all these new friends, we get this. You called the damn school. Way to fucking go, internet hate machine. Obviously, Trey didn't really understand how bad he messed up because he tries to excuse the post by saying it's obvious fate, but well, in the eyes of the law, a threat to a school, whether it was a joke or not, it's still a threat. So it was too late for Trey, as Anons, in fact, did get in contact with the police, and soon they would be at his house and searched it, looking for bomb materials, but they would not find any. Trey was charged with making a terroristic threat a third degree felony and making a bomb threat, which is a misdemeanor. No info on how long, if any time, he would have spent in juvie, which is where I assume he would have got sent, or maybe house arrest. Important side note, uh, ancient 4chan saying is, uh, we're not your personal army, and this kid learned it the hard way. Kenny, the cat abuser, slash Dusty the cat. So from what I understand about this event is that this was the first animal abuse story that 4chan ever tried to help. A YouTube channel called Glenn Spams One uploads two videos of two young men abusing their cat named Dusty. I won't be showing anything of that video due to how graphic it is. It starts with a guy just saying his name is Timmy, and he is known as the animal abuser, and then shows a cat. Then he proceeds to abuse it. The cameraman is laughing while this is happening. It ends with the cat being sprayed with water before he leaves it alone. Then another video, it's basically the same, but starts with spraying the cat with water first, then abusing it. This is when 4chan members found it, and they wanted to find the guys to bring them to justice. They thought of a theory of Timmy's real name being Mike Glenn, due to the comment that was posted on the video, and the name sounds familiar. They ended up finding someone in New York with the same name, but it turned out it wasn't the same person that was in the video. When the police came to his house, investigated, and proved it wasn't him. But 4chan went and tried again. They found the same username on a different website and found a zip code of 73505, which is in Oklahoma, Lawton. Then they found a teenager named Kenny Glenn. They found his Facebook and compared the video and the photos on the profile and matched it. They doxed their family and spread every piece of evidence just so it could never go away. They even found racist remarks from them. When the mother found out, via what I assume to be a 4chan user, calling the house, she said they will be punished, but the punishment was just her taking away their bikes. 4chan didn't like that, and law enforcement was eventually brought in, and it turns out that they found a third video of them abusing the cat, and the language the police was using sounded serious. But it also turns out, via an anonymous tip sent to neverforgetdusty.com, claimed that the family had connections with the judge and other high officials. Basically, nothing happened besides a story 
saying that the boys were punished and the cats were safe. Then another update about 10 months later appeared on KennyGlenn.net saying how the cats were still with their abusers and that the news was just a show that they put on so that they can leave them alone and that the sheriff is friends with the family. No one really knows what ended up happening to the cat and Kenny although some people in his class said that he never had any friends and was shunned due to the event and that he had to go to therapy until he was 18. In 2016, a user on Reddit claimed he was Kenny Glenn, saying he hasn't killed anyone, and then later makes an AMA on Reddit about the situation. He says he regretted the situation, but no one actually knows if this is him. Hopefully, the cats got away from their abuser, and hopefully, the abusers didn't get away scot-free. From the sounds of it, they didn't, but I'm not sure. The day 4chan got scared. If you've seen the Some Ordinaries Gamers video, you know what I'm about to talk about. On November 27, 2010 on 4chan, it was like any other day. There was a battle station thread, and it was just like any other thread until one image was uploaded. And just for context, a battle station thread is just where people show off their computer and their desk. An anon would post a picture of what appears to be a porch wing behind a desk with a laptop on top of the desk. Sitting on said porch wing is some sort of strange furry doll. I think it looks like a mouse, Eric says it looks like a bear. Regardless, Anon posted that it wasn't his battle station but rather his sanctuary. Now this immediately derails the whole thread and everyone wants to know what the fuck is going on and what sort of demonic being had cursed their eyes. Anon goes on to call his his teddy bears, I still think it looks like a mouse, and says it's called Samantha, as well as saying that the thing has a sister called Stacy, confirming Anon has more than one of these stuffed dolls. It just gets weirder from here, as Anon shows a room filled with the dolls and says that's where they all hang out to play, and in the following post Anon made says, She loves to have guests, but we never want them to leave, so we don't let them, he he. The next post by Anon confirms that he makes these by hand and plans on selling them. He also weirdly calls them his creations and that he is their god, so a very sane individual we have here. The last post is the most sad and strange as he uploads a picture of his family and talks about instilling wills into his dolls, as well as how his family enjoys the dolls in their fantasy room. Thankfully, Anon declares that he doesn't fuck them, so I guess that's at least something. Level 6 Jimmy Russell's The original thread, where an anonymous trolling poster claims to be a shooter in Modesto, California, who just shot and killed a cop, claiming SWAT will be busting down his door within minutes. The story is verified by 4chan via live police radio verification and Modesto, and the thread explodes. I just shot a cop. Ask me anything. OP, in fact, was not the shooter, but Fox News catches wind of the story and starts spreading misinformation like they typically do. So they show 4chan and the thread claiming that the shooter is blogging it online, bragging about the shootings and... But in fact, it, it wasn't the actual shooter, it was just some random guy trolling. Here's a clip for you guys to search his name to see if we could find any of his posts. We actually did on something called 4chan, and the resulting chatter we found to be filled with racial dialogue and pornography, so we've isolated only the comments about the shootings. Welcome to 4chan.org. It's a message board that predates Facebook and Reddit.com and tracks posts in Eastern Standard Time. Searching for James H. Ferrario of Chrysler Drive in Modesto, there's a post that hits about one an hour and two minutes after the fatal shots were fired in Modesto, it reads, quote, I just shot some cops. Ask me anything. Hurry, though. SWAT is about to bust in. In a comment posted 22 minutes after that, the blogger seems to be watching police swarming around outside his home saying, I have time because I know their every move at this point. I've got their channels monitored as well, the ones you don't hear on the scanner. And then later, I need to focus and adapt to their attack plan for a bit. 
The original poster seems to go quiet and then dozens of other bloggers get on and start talking, most of them debating whether or not he's talking about a real or fake scenario. Many of them are egging on the original poster, saying things like, quote, take out all the cops, bro. And then just before one Pacific time, a blogger gets on and types sending this info to police. Okay, so we'll get At this point, the FBI is brought into the shooting scene and 4chan claims that they're being monitored by the police and FBI. Maresto threads, now being formed every five minutes and filled with misinformation about the shooter and pictures of gore and shenanigans for the FBI. 4chan begins calling the shooter, James, aka Jimmy Russells, and quoting how the cops were wrestling his jimmies. They begin emailing Fox News and Twitter anonymous tip-offs about the shooter's identity claiming he's ex-military, heavily armed, and has a guerrilla fetish. They begin spamming Twitter, Google, Facebook for hours as the live feeds are happening. This wildfire of misinformation is again broadcasted on Fox News, claiming that James is aka Jimmy Russells, and the Lolzy anonymously sends an email to read on live TV at which point, more Google searches are being flooded with the name Jimmy Russells as a shooter and even a few news posts and blogs online begin referencing him. Here's another clip of Fox News reading the email. So after almost 13 hours standoff with the cops, the fire department, and the FBI, the story concludes with tear gas being shot inside Jimmy's apartment. The story concludes with tear gas being shot inside his apartment and flashbangs causing the apartment to catch fire. Jimmy's apartment, presumably with him still inside, catches fire and thousands of 4chan watch as the fire is allowed to burn until structural damage occurs and sounds of burning ammunition is heard from within. No attempt was made to extinguish the fire quickly the last of the live feeds start going offline shortly after 3 a.m. EST and we are left with images of Jimmy's burning apartment with no signs of him being alive or dead as the fire starts to slowly be put out by Modesto fire crews. Basically someone shoots a cop, a random 4chan user finds out about this and starts trolling on 4chan which eventually leads to them also trolling Fox News into believing everything is said on the thread and then law enforcement believes the guy is heavily armed so they tear gas and flashbang the building which makes it catch fire and from all we know the guy burns alive yeah kind of intense uh on to the next entry i guess german school shooter at this point things will start to get darker and we'll start with something that could be dark but hopefully isn't in a random thread on B, there was a threat made where OP threatens to kill people and says that it's gonna happen in Germany. This post was made on March 10, 2009. The following day, it would report that there was in fact a school shooting. The Winden school shooting happened on the following day and unfortunately, there would be 15 victims. Before in a shootout, after attempting to escape from the police, the perpetrator would kill himself. In the aftermath of it all, his online activities would be found. There's very little in truth to tie this post to the actual event, but by chance both things happen, in such a way to make it seem as they are connected. I really don't know what's worse, if the perpetrator on the events of the 11th actually posted on 4chan, or if someone just made a joke in poor taste, and the following day that event actually happened. Either way, it's horrible what happened to the victims, and we can't help but feel sorry for those who had to go through such a traumatic event. Paul gets two brothers killed. So two brothers get pulled over and end up stealing the cop car. Eventually, the cop car stops working. So one of the brothers named Miguel talks to a negotiator and asks to talk to his mom and says her number on the scanner. This is when 4chan gets involved, specifically Paul. They flood the mom's number so the police won't be able to get in touch with her. So Miguel eventually says that he's going to be that guy in five minutes if he doesn't get the call. 
but the police can't get through. He then shoots his brother and proceeds to commit word puzzle by cop. Here's a link to an article of the event. This one's pretty fucked and I really didn't want to say the other word so I just went with word puzzle. We're on the home stretch so on to the next entry. Toaster Steve. This incident is another tragic one in which a University of Guelph student commits suicide on a live stream. He would post on 4chan how he wanted to end Hero for them. Anons would get him to stream on a streaming site called Chatteen and when everything was set up, you would see Steven down pills with alcohol and get under his own bed. Steve had set up a toaster to start a fire and people simply watched and reacted as this all went down. Thankfully, the fire department would get there to stop the fire from spreading out but did in fact not get there in time to get Steve out in one piece, as he had caught fire and would be hospitalized. Luckily, while the injuries were serious, they were not life-threatening. Although the incident had passed, 4chan wasn't done with Steven. After this, he gets the nickname Toaster Steve, obviously mocking his attempt at his own life. And after the incident, while he was recovering in the hospital, some anons would find his Facebook account and openly mock him for failing to take his own life. Thankfully, his friends and family showed him their support by calling out the trolls in the comments. To end this entry, I'd like to remember people that there's always support out there for you. There are mental health outreach programs out there with people willing to help. If anyone does anything rash, to reach out to people. Because people's lives are worth it. Level 7 West Road's Mall Shooter On December 5th, 2007, I post on 4chan saying, Later today, I'm going to bring my rifle to Von Mar Department Store at the West Roads Mall, Omaha, Nebraska, to try and beat Cho's high score. I'm going to go out in style. The shooter was Robert A. Hawkins, a 19-year-old. According to the owner of the house he lived at, he was troubled. Although, in my opinion, that doesn't justify what he did. So in the shooting, eight people were killed, six were wounded, four from gunfire. He then committed word puzzle. The autopsy showed that he had more than 200 nanograms per milliliter of Valium in his system. That's in the low end of its therapeutic use range. And no other drugs were found in the system. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this entry. Usually when people say they're going to do something on 4chan, they never really do it. Sadly, this guy did. Luca Magnato one of the most pathetic people on the whole planet. That's really the best way to describe Luca Magnata, a failed actor who would do anything for fame and attention. When I mean anything, this husk of a human would torture animals and record and upload just wanting any sort of attention from it. His ties with 4chan are the fact that like usual, when 4chan saw animal abuse, they would step up and try to find and stop whoever was committing the torture. In this case, what seemed to grab the attention of 4chan and some Facebook users was a video called the One Boy Two Kittens in which Luke tortures a poor cat until it passes away due to the harm he causes it. This wouldn't be the only video he would produce. There are two more animal torture videos, and he would get the nickname the Vacuum Cat Killer. Things truly take a turn for the worse when a video called One Lunatic One Ice Pig, in which Luca would lure a man to his death by promising sex and then when on the bed would very violently end the other young man's life. And like the cat video, he recorded all of it. The victim Jun Lin was just at the wrong place with the wrong person. Our heart goes out to the family of Jun Lin. What really makes this whole entry all the worse is the fact that Luca was on the police's radar since all the online notoriety he had acquired from the videos would actually end up getting him identified by the online communities. But it doesn't seem like law enforcement ever did something to him and even if they did, who knows if it actually would have stopped them from murdering someone. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. Chris Dorner so this entry has a lot of similarities to the Jimmy's Russell's entry. Chris Dorner was a former police officer who fatally shot and killed four victims across Southern California in February of 2013. While the police did their investigation, they shot at several civilians after they mistook them for Dorner. After that, some Los Angeles residents wore things that said, we're not Chris Dorner. On February 4th, 2013, a manifesto was posted on Dorner's Facebook page, which explained the motives for attacking his victims. The manifesto accused the LAPD of corruption and racism 
leading up to his firing, and included the names of officers, locations, and instructions for journalists. The manifesto also included a section thanking Dorner's friends and family, as well as special messages to several celebrities and organizations, including Charlie Sheen, Anthony Bourdain, and the Westboro Baptist Church. Throughout the month, people would post others wearing things like, I'm not Chris Dorner, so that they wouldn't get shot at by police. So this part of the event is known as the shootout in Big Bear. At first, Dorner steals a truck. Luckily, he left the driver unharmed. But fish and wildlife officers recognized Dorner as the person driving. Then, multiple officers and agencies chased Dorner to a cabin near Big Bear Lake. Dorner then saw two officers and shot at them, wounding them. They were airlifted to Loma Linda University Medical Center, and Detective Jeremiah McKay was pronounced dead. Dorner barricaded himself in the cabin. The police at first tried to draw him out with tear gas and demanded his surrender. He did not respond to police, so they tried to knock down the walls with demolition vehicles. After that, they shot pyrotechnic tear gas canisters, which were nicknamed burners. They throw them into the cabin, and the cabin catches fire. After that, they only hear one gunshot in the cabin. The fire continued, and the ammunition was exploding, so it was really dangerous to put out the fire. On February 13th of 2013, it was reported that human remains were found, and on the 14th, an autopsy confirmed that it was Dorner. Although they said it was a single gunshot that killed him, deputies claim that they did not deliberately set the cabin on fire. Many people believe this is not true, and we're doing it on purpose. Now you might be wondering, where's 4chan in all of this? Well, they kind of get involved during the shootout at the cabin. They order a pizza to the cabin while this is happening. And another 4chan user also makes a mod of Doom 2 reliving the events of the shootout. Well, 4chan didn't really play a big role in the entry, but it's kind of hard to find entries that I think belong in the lower parts of the iceberg. And I mean, 4chan was technically involved with this. So yeah, I'm putting it here. Also, it's kind of weird that California officers set two different buildings with criminals inside of them on fire. Yeah, just a thought that came to my head as I was reading the first one. I thought while I was reading that, why is this on the iceberg twice? Dang, I gotta change it. But I went back to check the script and stuff, and it was different. It was just a really weird coincidence, I guess. Anyways, uh, yeah. <laughs>